Hey friend and welcome back to the channel. A friend of mine asked me recently how can he become a data analyst from scratch. He doesn't have much technical experience, he did an MBA, he's more into economics, project management and he asked me how can I help him become a data analyst from scratch. And here's my advice to him and I wanted to share with you as well, maybe if you come from a different industry and you want to become a data analyst or maybe if you're lucky and you're already a technical person and want to shift into data analysis. So first, I recommended him to go and start learning Excel. Excel is quite important because you get to learn how to work with tables and data analysts most of the time you work with tables data is usually quite structured data scientists on the other hand might work with more unstructured data data engineers as well but data analysts usually should be really good at analyzing tables tabular data so Excel is a must and here when I say Excel, it doesn't mean you should know everything about it, but just some basics. You know, how to open the table, how to convert if it's like a comma delimiter or a semicolon delimiter, how to do some pivots, how to open things, you know, like this type of very basic manipulations that you can do in Excel. And obviously, if you use primarily Excel for your data analysis, you need to know some more advanced concepts. But if you know a programming language, which I will speak about later, then it's fine to know just some basic of Excel just to get around the data if you have it in an Excel file or CSV file but the rest you can do it programmatically. So I recommend spending one to two weeks learning the basics of Excel and as for the rest of this video I recommend to do hands-ons. So I gave my friend a data set to go and play around with on Excel while learning directly on the platform and also I told him to use a tool like AI Google Studio which I covered in a previous video that I can link somewhere at the top or in the description below that you can directly interact with the AI showing your screen and it can show you step by step how to do things and you can learn by doing instead of learning by watching tons of videos. Next is to learn SQL or SQL, depends on how you pronounce it. SQL is one of the most used programming languages for data analysts and basically SQL is the language that you use to go and analyze the backend, the databases and it's very important because you'll find most companies and most clients that you might work with that they leverage SQL a lot it's one of the most basic programming languages to directly go and get insights from the database, doing some merges, having some primary, secondary keys. So that's also one that I highly recommend before jumping into other a little bit more advanced, I would say, like Python or R. So again, two weeks of good practice in SQL while doing mostly hands-on, trying to learn the basics, but learn directly on a backend platform where you can have a few files that you can play around with, a few tables, learning how to connect primary key to foreign keys and all those things doing all the joins the left joins right joins outer joins all these basic things and also how to extract exactly the data that you want in SQL is very very important for data analysts you might not use it depends on the case like now in my job at the moment I don't use SQL I use primarily Python and Excel but in my previous job I used mostly SQL so it really depends but it's always good to have this one next and this is the most advanced I would say to learn Python and especially pandas library which is the one that we use as data analysts a lot so Python is the programming language, is the most famous programming language out there and it's the one that you use mostly by data analysts, data engineers and data scientists as well. And why using Python? It's because some data sets are quite complex and when you use Python you can by code do things that you will usually struggle to do in Excel. And also in Excel there's a limit on how many rows you can analyze which you don't have this problem if you do it programmatically in Python for example using pandas. So again, Python might take a little bit more time depending on if you did code before or not, but I would highly recommend a good month of good hands-on practice. Take a data set and start slowly, start bring the data in, open it in the data frame and do all those things that you could do in SQL as well, but do them with Python. And you'll see over time when you get familiar with it, that it's way faster to use Python than using other like SQL or Excel, especially when the data gets a little bit more complex and you need to have a little bit more flexibility on how you manipulate the data. Other people use R, I'm not familiar with R, my colleague uses it in, in work, I do understand his code when he shares with me, but I'm not familiar that much to speak about it, so I will suggest Python here, but if you want to go for R, I would suggest the same, one month 
to get to know it and start using it. Next is get familiar with Power BI or Tableau because data analysts have lots of dashboards that they make, lots of visuals. You can make them using Python as well with libraries like Matplotlib or Plotly that I really like. But most of the times, if your company uses Power BI or Tableau, you'll have to use these tools. So choose one of them. I did Power BI, I worked primarily with Power BI before. So my focus was on Power BI directly. I even made a video on how to pass the PL300 certification, which is the Power BI certification with Microsoft that I can link in the description below for you to watch if you're interested, but spend a good two weeks on it, trying to do some basic visualizations, bring the data in, try to bring a flat data with a CSV, try to connect a database when you do some practice with SQL and all these things. And then you learn how to make visualizations in Power BI or Tableau, how to share them with your team, because this is very valuable. If you do some analysis, if you can't share them with stakeholders, then there is no purpose in doing them in the first place. So choose one of these, spend a good two, three weeks on them. There are some really nice courses on Udemy on how to learn Power BI, some that I took myself. So I highly recommend to go a little bit extra, but always remember hands-on, hands-on, hands-on. That's how you learn. Next is get familiar with PowerPoint. PowerPoint is very important because most companies use PowerPoints for their presentation. Whether you like it or not, or you think that Microsoft tech stack is outdated, but lots of people use Excel, use PowerPoint, and the best way for you to start delivering quickly is by learning the tools that people already use. And PowerPoint is one of them, and it's not that difficult, but just get used to making reports in PowerPoint so that you can share them with your team members, your clients, the stakeholders, whatever, do it on PowerPoint and go and watch some videos on how to do them well. And remember, it's not about how many slides you have, it's about the quality of the information that you put in. So focus more on the analytics part to deliver the right things instead of focusing too much on the packaging. The packaging comes after. First is the analytics and the packaging is second. And final tip that I give to my friend is to do freelance projects because along the way, you can start doing projects, maybe helping a friend, maybe doing a project for free, or going on Upwork and doing a project and even be underpaid because you're learning and it will force you to do more because when I started myself a few years ago I didn't have much experience as a data scientist but I went for it and when the clients were giving me new instructions new work I was going and discovering new things bit by bit it forced me to learn more it forced me to learn faster and it also forced me to think as someone that delivers insights for the business and not just doing some analysis and some reporting that no one will ever see. So having in mind that you could start freelancing early on, even if you do it for free, will force you to learn these skills in a way that you can apply them. And then you see if the results were satisfying, if they were not. When I started, for example, the reports were like 25 pages long. And one CEO told me that I don't care about 95% of the things that you put. He said that I only needed two pages maximum. So I learned, okay, when I speak to CEOs, I have to go straight to the point. When I speak to technical people, I can elaborate more for example and these things you can only learn them by doing freelancing or working with clients and if you need an AI assistant to help you learn any of these tools, I made a video on AI Google Studio that can show you how you can interact with Google AI platform, share your screen and speak directly to the AI and they can explain to you how to do things. I made a full video here on how you can do it as well. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you on the next one.